This is the Galleon 500 fly. And on the face of it, it looks like pretty much every other 16 meter flybridge on the market. But this is no ordinary 16 meter flybridge boat. In fact, it has one of the best party tricks in the sector. And in this review, I'm gonna show you what that is. I'm gonna give you a full tour of the deck's interior and machinery space and find out whether underneath all of those gadgets and gizmos, there's a sound, practical cruising boat. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. Now you might expect with all those weighty toys in the cockpit that the driving experience could be a little bit lethargic, but it's really not. It's actually a really pleasant surprise, especially with these D11 725s. They're 10.8 litre inline sixes with just over 2,300 newton metres of torque each. So there's plenty of oomph right from kickoff. It really does get going nicely and gets into its 22 knot cruising speed nice and comfortably. At that speed, you've got a cruising range of probably around 250 nautical miles, top speed in the region of 30 knots, but really there's no point being up there unless you're in a massive hurry, stick at 22 knots. Sound levels are reasonably contained. The engines are a little bit audible when we're up at this speed, just below 80 decibels, but manageable. Most people will probably cruise with the windows down, actually you have windows on both sides that can drop down. Obviously you can open the aft doors as well, but actually noise levels really aren't too much of an issue. You can have natural conversation. You might have noticed that I'm sitting slightly to the left of the wheel. The reason for that is the view forward is actually very good. It's a one piece windscreen, but just to starboard here, there's a big windscreen mullion that really does create quite a blind spot. There's a quarter light here, which helps a bit, but that is quite big. So you find yourself moving over just to give yourself the clearest view to starboard. What about the physical driving environment? Well, actually it's very good. You're nice and close to the helm, which I really like. Everything is quite high, close to you, easy to interact with. You have a nice run of proper hard switches down here for all of the things you're going to be using regularly. I'm not going to dive into the menus too much. They used to have, on the previous iteration of this boat, analog dials up here at the top. You can still see the moulding and the old romantic in me wishes they were still there to an extent because A, they look good and B, they're really easy and clear to glance at short notice. But as I said, digital instrumentation all the way these days and it works really nicely. Of course, this isn't the only place you can drive this boat from. There's a more exciting option, especially in weather as good as this. Yeah, this is where you want to be on a day like this. This is why you buy a flybridge boat. Sun on your back, wind in your hair. You can hear the water rushing past the hull. Now that is great to have down there when the weather's not so good. But if it's anything like this, this is really where you want to be. And I tell you what, from up here, you can really enjoy this boat's handling. And much like the performance, it's a really pleasant surprise. It's almost sports boat-esque, actually. It's nice and agile. The steering is light, but it's got good resistance. It doesn't feel overly sensitive like an IPS boat might do. There's really good bite from the propellers and the rudders. And yeah, it's not a sort of ponderous, lumpen thing. It, uh, it reacts really nicely from the helm. And again, at that 22 knot cruising speed, it's what we're doing right now, uh, pulling around 2000 RPM, really is the sweet spot. The only downside about up here is that the helm ergonomics are no way near as good as downstairs. Everything is just a bit too far away from me. The chart plotter especially, which is something you interact with a lot, is a long, long stretch away from you. There's no remote buttons down here so that you can use it from a bit closer to the seat. Now I should mention that this bench is actually an option. As standard, you have two bucket seats and they do have adjustments, so that would make things better. But even so, the top part of that dash is just a little bit too far away. However, the relationship between the steering wheel and the throttles is great. And to be honest, on a day like this, you're gonna sit back, hit autopilot, and just enjoy the ride. Now, I think I've just spotted a great place to pull over and show you a few more features. Now I promised you a party trick and voila, would you look at this. Is this not just 
the coolest living space, certainly in this sector. It really is unbeatable. And what I really like is they haven't just put the balconies on, let those grab the headlines and gone, job done. No, no, it's all the other elements as well, like these rotating seats. So you can spin this whole thing all the way around and look out to sea rather than into the boat. There's even a barbecue integrated under this flap here. And underneath that, there's a tender garage large enough for a Williams mini jet. Now you can have a crew cabin, but if you have that, you've got to have the L-shaped seating, which is fixed. No, 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 this is what you want. Especially if you're going to team it with the hydraulic bathing platform, which has got steps built in, just makes this a really wonderful sort of water sports party area. Like you don't have to have these railings in. Again, they're a good safety touch, a bit of soupy up sparkle maybe, but really, People will probably leave this off. You can jump in, kids can jump on and off. You can get the paddleboard alongside. It will work really nicely again when teamed with the platform. And this for me is one of the best spots on the boat. You see this is a two-way backrest. So this bench can face into the saloon, just become a little settee opposite the galley. But you can flip the backrest the other way, put this squab down, and you've got a really nice spot to sit with a coffee or something stronger. You can put this all the way down, have a sun pad here. Yeah, I really like this place. So crewing on this boat is interesting because obviously with the balconies down, you can't see what the setup is back there, but there is no guardrail back there. It's quite tall though, and there is a cleat on there so you can easily hang a fender from there. Here, these are a little bit low, but they're really substantial. And again, it's really easy to hang fenders. And I like that they've got this handrail up here so you can really easily negotiate your way forward. And naturally, this isn't just some flat sun pad. There's a lot going on up here as well. You'll notice there's actually glass in the foredeck. That's to draw natural light down into the VIP cabin. A great effect, but you might just want to watch when this gets wet because it could get a little bit slippery. The table slots into the middle of it. That just folds in half like that. And then another really nice touch is that these are actually mounted on runners, these sections of the seating. So you can either have a walkway or you can have them buttoned up like this so you have U-shaped seating. But if I push this button, the whole thing moves forward. And then suddenly I've got a nice walkway off to the side deck. They also move up and down. So you can bring them up if you want to dine or you can put them down if you want to lounge. Another nice aspect of this seating is how quickly it transforms from lounge to driving. Really simple, really effective mechanism. It's much the same on the port side deck up here, but on this side, obviously you have the galley and then you have the bar area. So this is flush to the galley ordinarily, it means you can slide the door across. Then when the door's open, flip this section up and you've got the two bar stools. You've got this sort of inside, outside, brilliant galley bar area, love it. And that's what is so impressive about the layout of this boat. It's the inside, outside, open plan living. Lots of brands try it, but Galleon have really gone all in and it works brilliantly. Obviously you have the aft galley for exactly that reason. If I have one complaint on this main deck, there's a bit of a lack of cooling space. Now to be fair, there is an ice maker here and there's a wine fridge here, so your booze is taken care of. But for a 16 meter boat that people might live on for you know, a couple of weeks, maybe more, one under counter fridge, a little bit pokey. There is a small fridge up on the flybridge as well, but still, you might be a bit low on cooling space. Rest of the galley is great though. Loads of really nice chunky countertop, loads of space to prepare drinks and food. I like the fact that your twin sinks have got a cover that is also a chopping board, induction cooking, electric cooker down there. And it's an option, but this boat has also got a dishwasher. Nice again, if you're having a few guests on board, there are endless wood options inside this boat, almost too many to count. This is the gloss walnut, looks really, really smart, especially when teamed with the white countertops and the cream leather. A couple of steps up into the main part of the saloon, which looks a little bit formulaic compared to the rest of the main deck. But of course, there's loads going on here as well. Like, for example, a television pops up from here. This table is on high-low legs, so you can drop that right down. There's an infill cushion. You can sleep two more people here, as well as in the cabin. So in total, you can sleep eight adults on board this boat. And this is a nice touch, because a lot of the time, this is just wasted space when the boat's stationary, the helm seat facing forward. No one's gonna sit there when the boat's not moving, but spin that round, simple as you like, and suddenly it's opposite the dinette. Much more sociable arrangement. And actually, these pull out and you can draw those up to the table so you can get more people sitting down if you are dining inside. Accommodation. 
Now the physical layout is actually set down here, but it is a good one and it works well. On starboard, you have a bunk cabin. Now some rivals like the Sea Lion F530 would have twin cabin here. They have the berths side by side. So there's a bit more space because it's beamier, but actually the berths are a good size and there's a decent amount of storage in there. Then you have the day heads to port. Again, that's a good size, has a separate shower cubicle, decent amount of storage in there as well. And there's another door in there because that is actually en suite to this VIP cabin. And actually, this is a great cabin. I mentioned about having the glass in the ceiling. Loads of natural light can pour down here, just makes it feel a bit more spacious, a bit more special. Loads of storage in here. And again, you just notice the quality of everything. But the star of the show is the master cabin. Yeah, this is a fantastic space for a 16 meter boat. Totally flat floor. I'm six foot one and I've got room above my head to stand up straight. You can get down both sides of the bed. Nice big double bed set quite low, very easy to get in and out of. And I love the intricacy of the lighting. You've got the backlit bed head. You've got these reading lights. You've got the lamps. There's a really good mix of artificial lighting throughout the interior, but you notice it especially inside this cabin. It's practical too. Storage absolutely everywhere. Behind me, big full standing hanging locker there. You've got space in here for washer dryer. It's an option. But again, if you're going to be on board for a long time, nice to have that there. Television mounted above, of course, and even space for a little bureau opposite. The bathroom in this cabin is just on the starboard side as you come in. It's totally private en suite and it's got a separate shower cubicle as well. But now let's go up to the flybridge. Now with all those funky gizmos on the main deck, it's easy to forget there's actually a flybridge up here and a really good one. Now the hard top is an option, but it's probably going to be a pretty popular one. Headroom a little bit tight behind here, but obviously as you move forward, you get a bit more headspace where the sunroof is. And it's nice that you have the sunroof so you can adjust what's going on depending on the weather conditions. Big table back here. Got some struts underneath to hold these big solid teak leaves. And then nice touches, move your cushions. You can flip this this way. So when you're dining, you have even more seating space around this table. It extends a long way back, big high backrest. Should be really comfortable for long, lazy lunches at anchor. Now opposite, it's quite a small wet bar, but it's well designed and you can open it in two sections. You can just get to the sink quickly if you want to and you pop it up again. There's your grill. There's a small fridge underneath and a bit of storage. So it's not huge, but everything you need to serve your guests up here. And then again, when you're on passage, you just got cushions, fit this back the other way. And you have space for two more people to sit facing forward, enjoying the journey. So those are the deck spaces. The last place to check out is the engine room. So access to the engine room is via the saloon floor and it's a little bit of a fiddly process because it's a two part hatch. You take the top off, you take the insulated hatch off and then you have to find somewhere to stow it and it's a little bit fiddly. It'd be easier if it was just on a gas ram and it lift up all in one go. However, once you're down here, ladder access right down between two engines, nice need to get down here, it's well lit. Engine options on this boat, you have all Volvo Penta D8600, D11675, or these D11725s, which are the largest option on this boat. You can have this block with IPS pods, but it's about 100,000 pounds more. Really not a premium most people will be willing to pay. This feels like the best option. And access is good. You can get to all the ancillaries easily enough. There's a bit of intrusion from the tender garage, but generally for a boat of this size, this is a good space. The startup process on a Volvo Penta engine, for those who aren't familiar, is quite simple. There's no key anymore. You have this plastic tab here, you tap this down here, works almost like an immobilizer. So you get your two ignitions on, and then you have a start stop button per engine. Starboard, port, and you're up and running. Simple as that. Now, this isn't an IPS boat, this has got twin shafts, so of course you have a pair of throttles. You also have proportional side power bow and stern thrusters. So, okay, you don't have the joystick control of IPS, but you have really good fine control on this boat because you have really nice bite in and out of gear, really nice and easy to control, you know, keep the wheel in the middle and just use the shafts to do the work. And then of course you have those proportional bow thrusters so you can feed in the power gently and they'll even hold the boat against the pontoon 
if you're single-handed and you need to get off and put a line on, then the boat will pin itself up against the pontoon. In terms of electronics, as standard, you get a single 12-inch chart plotter. You can add a second screen, which most people will do. So you can have, say, radar one side, you can have your chart the other. You also get the Volvo Pinter screen, so you can use that for engine information, but that's also an MFD, so you can have a chart through there. But as I said, most people, the preferable setup is probably to have two screens down here. So that's the startup procedure. It's time to head back in. The UK Galleon dealer approved boats has a very sensible approach to pricing. There's a UK spec and a med spec. The med spec has everything the UK spec has, plus a larger generator, air conditioning, a passerelle, and more powerful engines to help propel all that kit along. The UK spec is just over a million pounds excluding VAT. The med spec is just over 1.1 million pounds excluding VAT. At the beginning of this review, I asked whether there was a good boat beneath this galleon's folding and swivelling theatrics, and the short answer is yes. The 500 Fly is practical, well put together, and what's most pleasing is how good it is to drive. There are competitors with superior accommodation, but this is a 50-foot flybridge that manages to keep a close eye on value for money and deliver a bit of extra sparkle. Thanks very much for watching that review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do get into the comments and let me know what you thought about the review and the boat. And please do give us a like if you enjoyed it and hit subscribe and the bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.